Okay, so this video isn't really a tutorial video. I just basically kind of wanted to show you what goes into building a drum rack that can do all kinds of crazy things. Like, for instance, start this back at the start here. I'll show you what these knobs do. First knob here is like a filter cutoff. Second knob controls that whoosh sound in the background. This third knob here enables and disables an extra kick. This fourth knob controls the volume of the extra kick. Let's see what that sounds like without it. These last two knobs here, um, you probably hear that EKG noise in the background. This controls the distortion level for the EKG, and this controls the volume for the EKG. I'm going to try and walk you through exactly what I did in order to put this together the way I did, and my reasons for putting it together the way I did. Start by opening this up. Now you notice there's a couple extra racks inside this rack. I'm going to start with this drum and noise one. The very first thing that I loaded when I opened up the software was the addictive drums. I found a kit that I really liked. I didn't edit it at all. Located in the Real Machines, excellent audio, the very first one. Sounds really good. The very next thing I added here was... Actually, I didn't add that next. The very next thing I added was this reverb. Now, when this knob is turned, it actually controls the dry-wet knob on the reverb. It also controls the dry wet knob on this ping pong delay. Now you notice this ping pong delay is in a rack all by itself. There's a dry and a wet. The reason I did this is because I always want the dry signal to pass. So this is an easy way to get your dry and wet signals to pass no matter what. very next thing here is just an auto filter. It moves only slightly. And it's just to cut off the higher frequencies as you build, as you turn this knob down, it opens up more of the filter. The next thing is the redux. And the same thing here, I want the dry signal to pass no matter what. Redux doesn't have a wet dry knob. And what this knob does for the Redux is it turns up the down sample. And the nice thing with Redux is that it creates some interesting uh, harmonic glitches or whatever you want to call them. If you listen to this and you hear that ting to ting to ting ting sound, that's actually this Redux effect. very last thing in this chain here is the EQ8, um, which would have been the last effect that I loaded. And all it does is it cuts out the lowest frequencies and the highest frequencies. There's a slight notch in the middle there. And of course a velocity effect to provide some random velocities. The very next chain I added was, well actually let me touch on this real quick too, an interesting feature with addictive drums is that you can route any of these channels externally. So I have this Tom 4 routed externally. That's what this little button here is for. And I have it routed to this track. And the reason I did that is because I wanted that Tom to have its own effects. So let's listen to this with just the Tom. So 
So what I have here is just an auto pan, a ping pong delay, and a gate. This gate effect, there's spots where the um, main drum beat cuts out and I wanted the EKG beep to cut through. So what this does is when all the drums cut out, it mutes the tom track. For instance, right here is where the EKG cuts in, so see that? I didn't want the ping pong delay to cut through when I want it when everything else is cutting out, so that's why that's there. Okay, so the next thing here is actually the noise, a white noise generator or whatever kind of noise I used. We have another rack here. Now with analog, if you disable both the oscillators and just enable the noise, no matter what key is pressed, it'll trigger the same noise. Another thing here is, if you look at my key map, an interesting thing with addictive drums is it only receives triggers on C1 through B4. So anything above B4 or below C1 can be used to trigger other instruments. So what I have here is noise is mapped to C5 through B5. And then I have some extra drums mapped to C-2 through B0. So if you look at my MIDI clip here, C1 through G4 triggers a different drums. These lower buttons trigger the uh, extra percussion. Okay, so back looking at analog here. Basically, what I have here in addition to the or in addition to just this noise generator is this filter knob also moves the color knob for the noise generator, which just generates different kinds of like a different shade, if you will, of the noise. I also have an auto filter here. This is what causes it to fade in with that whoosh sound. And if you notice, when this knob reaches zero, this utility turns on. And the reason I have this utility here is it lowers the gain by minus 35 decibels, effectively um, muting this instrument. So what I wanted to happen when I turn this knob all the way down is for it to mute. And that's what that is for. The last thing I have here is the extra percussion and this is just a drum rack and inside this drum rack I have two heartbeat samples, three EKG samples, and an extra bass drum sample. If you look inside this drum rack, you'll see that there's only three chains here. The reason that is is because with a drum rack you can actually group your different tracks into additional drum racks. So this heartbeat, I wanted it to have its own EQ effect. This EKG, I wanted to have its own effects too. So there's the overdrive for the EKG. And this knob over here actually turns the wet dry knob for that distortion. Also this knob right here, if you notice, increases and lowers the volume for the EKG. As well as this knob right here also controls the extra kick volume. Last chain here is just the bass drum with an auto filter. And this auto filter doesn't actually do anything except for cut out the lower frequencies and provide a slight notch right there. It's always it's usually a good idea to cut out the lower frequencies on your bass drum so it makes a cleaner mix, not so muddy sounding. Okay, so one last thing here. If we have a look at this MIDI clip, you notice that there are no MIDI triggers for this bass drum. Yet this bass drum is being triggered. The, the way that this is accomplished is with a MIDI effect rack, so I can turn it on and off. And basically what I have here, if you open it up, 
So I've got a chain with no effects on it. And I've also got a chord effect. And the way I have this set up is that the this bass drum is set to trigger two octaves below C1. So this bass drum is actually on C minus one. If we open this back up, you'll notice this bass drum is on C minus one. So what this chord effect does is any time, and actually I gotta show you this key map too. If you look at this key map, this chord effect is only set to affect C1. And I also have a chain selector here so that I can turn the second chain on and off. So anytime C1 is triggered, when this chain is activated, it'll also trigger a C1 two octaves lower. This is how you're able to um, activate and deactivate your extra kick drum. Thank you.